This video is going to go over how to properly hip hinge to maximize your glute gains and also get the most out of your main movements like squats and deadlifts. If you can master this movement pattern, you'll be able to get so much more out of those lifts as well. The main movers of this exercise is the glute max, so the main glute muscle and the hamstrings. And the main function of those movers in this exercise specifically is going to be hip extension. So basically moving from a hip flexed position, which you see on the right, basically bringing the knees closer to the chest into a hip extended position. This movement also requires an isometric hold through the back extensors and the core musculature which is why it can be a very helpful exercise if you have problems with your back rounding in your deadlift. In order to get into a proper position for this exercise, it's important that you have proper hip flexion mobility. So implementing things like banded hip distractions, which you see here, can really allow you to get the most out of this exercise. The more you can get into a hip flexed position, the more range of motion that the joints and the muscles are going to move through space and therefore more overall tension will be applied to the muscles that you're targeting. So in this banded hip distraction, you're going to grab a band about medium resistance, set it up on something sturdy and put it up high up in the hip crease as much as possible. And then you want to walk it out so that there's resistance in that band. And it's going to essentially pull your hip as far back into the posterior hip capsule as possible. Again, the main idea here is to gain as much hip flexion mobility so that we can move from a very hip flexed position into a hip extended position and get the joint moving through its full range of motion. Now, the reason you want to focus on getting some hip flexion and some slight external rotation of the hip is because if you allow your hips to close off and internally rotate, like you see here, it will actually close off that hip joint and prevent you from actually getting into a deep hip flex position. So the most important part to know about controlling this exercise and really any exercise in general is pelvic position and control. So right here you see anterior pelvic tilt. This basically means that the hip joints or the bones of the pelvis are going to be tilted forward. So if, imagine if you had your hips as a bowl full of water, if it tilted forward, the water would pour forward. You could see that in that position, there is a slight arch to that lower back, that mid to lower back. The ribs are kind of flared outward and you see that more curved back position. Now we want to bring ourselves back to neutral or a more stacked position where the hips are directly under the ribs. Now this is posterior pelvic tilt, which is the opposite. So the hips are a little bit more tucked under like this. And you can see that the low back is a little bit more flush and almost rounded in a way. Once you can control the position of your pelvis, the more you'll be able to control the position of this movement overall. So don't skip this part. This is how we're actually going to perform the exercise. So what I want you to do is think long, drawn in and up through the abs, and then I want you to pull those ribs down. So you could see in the beginning, I started really long and tall. My ribs were a little bit more flared out, and then I drew them back down to brace my abs and keep my core really engaged. Now from there, you're going to try to cue to keep the ribs and the hips connected as much as possible. So once you have those abs engaged, you're not in anterior pelvic tilt, you're not in posterior pelvic tilt, but you're very stacked with the ribs and the hips directly on top of each other. You want to try to keep those as connected as possible as you hinge your hips back. So I want you to think long and tall, tensioned and braced with a soft unlock of the knees. You don't want to actively bend your knees and you don't want to keep them locked out. They're just slightly unlocked. And then from there, you're going to guide your hips back to the wall behind you and stop when the hips can no longer move back. And then you want to use your glutes to come back up. Something else you can think about is to pack the neck and make a double chin. Some people don't think about their heads, but this actually can play a role in how much tension there is created throughout the spine. Now, the last thing you wanna think about is to always keep your lats engaged throughout the movement in order to maintain torso rigidity and stability, as well as maintain an isometric hold throughout your upper body. So by protecting your armpits, you'll be able to essentially keep the weight as close to your body as possible, which is what you always want to try to achieve. Now, how to actually progress this movement, I would start with just body weight. And if you're still having trouble cueing to guide your hips back, use a resistance band as a more external cue to really get that physical um, touch and 
allow the band to guide your hips back. So you're gonna set that band up and put it at hip level and set it up right on that hip crease. So essentially when you are kind of hinging, the band is going to guide your hips back and give you that external cue as far as how to load the hips back and feel that tension in your glutes, feel the tension in your hamstrings, and then again, pushing and extending those hips forward so you'll have more resistance as you're coming back to that standing position. So you always want to think long and tall through the torso, hips back as much as possible, and then pushing your hips forward to stand tall at the top and you want to get that glute squeeze at the top. You don't want to fold over. You can see here the back is very rounded and I'm just folding over through the back. I'm not actually hinging through the hips. So use that band to really, again, pull those hips far back behind you as much as possible. Keep your torso long and tensioned and then push your hips through against that band. From there, you can add some resistance. I like to start with kettlebells, either just holding one or two. You can keep that band across your hips as well if you still find that you need that external cue. But from there, you can use some extra resistance with the kettlebells or the dumbbells. They can be interchangeable. I do find that people feel a little bit more comfortable holding kettlebells for some reason. And then from there, you can progress into dumbbells. I like to use straps for dumbbells or kettlebells just to kind of eliminate that grip factor. But if you're just starting out, you don't need to worry about that because you won't be going as heavy. And then from there, you can progress into barbell RDLs because these will allow you to really, really overload the movement, but I would suggest not using this until you feel comfortable with the other regressions. Now, talking about common mistakes, which a lot of people will make, take your time through this portion of the video because it is going to be important and you might not notice that you're making these mistakes. So the first one is going to be staying in an overextended anterior pelvic tilt position. This will essentially keep your lower body in a very tensioned position and will prevent you from loading properly into the hip hinge. The next one is going to be folding or hinging through the back instead of the hips. This one is kind of obvious, but is a very, very common mistake. So you could see that the hips are not really guiding backwards. They're almost staying in the same place and I'm just folding over at the back. This will actually be caused more by lack of pelvic position. So keeping your pelvis in a more posterior pelvic tilt versus that more neutral slash a little bit of anterior pelvic tilt. The next mistake is actively bending the knees too much. This one is also very common where it turns into a more of a conventional style deadlift. We want to try to eliminate as much quad involvement as possible and keep the tension only in the posterior. So try to just stop where the hips stop and don't actively bend the knees anymore. People will also make the mistake of trying to keep their chest up throughout the movement instead of trying to keep a rigid torso position. This will keep them in a more extended position and prevent them from hinging as much as possible. People will also make the mistake of reaching their arms to the ground rather than keeping their lats engaged and keeping that weight as close to their body as possible. This will promote a more upper back rounded position and not keep that torso as rigid as possible like we are trying to achieve. So keep your lats engaged, keep your armpits protected and try to keep that weight as close to your body as possible. Lastly, using momentum or going too fast, this is going to cause you to lose tension in the posterior and also cause you to lose position and rigidity of the torso and pelvis. Our goal is to load and contract through the glutes and hamstrings, so by controlling the movement, we'll be able to properly tension and contract the right body parts. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you found this helpful. I could go on and on and on about this. There's so much more I want to cover, but I'll save that for another video. If you found this helpful, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.